All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I'm here in a, a kind of gray San Diego today for some reason. Uh, normally it's sunny, but today it's gray. And I'm joined by um, Ruth Reitmeyer, who is in Rice University, who is in the Door, the Door Institute for New Leaders. How are you doing, Ruth? I'm doing great today, John. Thank you. How are you? Excellent, excellent. Uh, and Ruth is the Assistant Director for Coaching at the Adore Institute for New Leaders. She oversees hiring, training, managing professional coaches who work directly with Rice students to increase their leadership capacity. So, um, Ruth, why did, uh, why did uh, uh, the Adore Institute and Rice see that there was a necessity to start working and developing students as leaders from the get-go, right from from right from under, you know, from their freshman year through. I mean, why did they see this as important? Well, John, one of the things that we have um, emphasized in leader development is the importance of early intervention. That just as you would want um, to introduce musical instruction or playing a new sport or learning a second language, the earlier you can introduce these skills into a person's life the more opportunity they have to develop those skills and to gain expertise. And so it's the same thing with leader development. We believe that helping um, young adults in their most formative years as in, a, in their um, college years is a strategic time for developing leadership capacity. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, most people who end up in leadership positions often, I mean, it's really a trial and error thing, how you develop your leadership skills. I know the, the leadership positions that I've held over the years, um, mine's been through a lot of trial and tribulation and probably a lot of errors too. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some of the things that you are looking to develop in these young people early, you know, before they even enter the workforce? What kind of leadership skills are you trying to uh, introduce and develop in them? So I'll say that we, we have this holistic approach to leader development. We're looking to develop their emotional skills, their cognitive skills, and their social skills. And so two of the things that are, you know, that we're always trying to balance is developing leader identity. Mm -hmm. Because unless an individual sees themselves as a leader, they're not likely to step up into leadership responsibility or display those behaviors. So Cultivating that leader identity is important to us, as well as the practical skills, those core competencies that we believe are essential for effective leadership. Things like delegating, inspiring and casting a vision, knowing how to deliver feedback and develop people on your team. Um, so, you know, we're trying to create um, a leader from multiple angles. Yeah. And so how do you, uh, how do the students react to this, the students who come into your program? Because, you know, let's face it, in, in, in college and university sometimes, you know, maybe their focus is a little bit elsewhere. I mean, they're good mm -hmm. with doing their academics, but maybe not developing their leadership skills is not something that they're, that was their number one priority when they came in. So what kind of reaction do you get from them when they come into the program? So, you know, we have been... Um, at Rice University now for about four years. And I think that we've really begun to see a, a shift and maybe we've reached this tipping point where a lot of students come into Rice already knowing who the Door Institute is and they already mm -hmm. have intentions of working with us um, during their time here at Rice. That wasn't always the case, but because we've had such incredible impact, um, word of mouth has, you know, um, the word of mouth, I think, has really um, allowed right. the students to um, explore and understand what we offer at the Door Institute. I think also right. increasingly these college students are realizing that the job market is so competitive mm -hmm. and that, you know, as they look for these internships and these jobs after graduation, they are being asked about leadership experience. And yeah. so onboarding these skills during their college years is becoming more and more critical. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's an interesting point that uh, that you touch upon there because uh, we also uh, at Pipeline is here and we work with DePaul University uh, and with their sales program there, their undergrad uh, sales mm -hmm. program there, which helps 
uh, teach people how to be salespeople, but also how to use the technologies they need, like CRM, when they come out. So similarly, what you're talking about leadership here. Mm -hmm. And I know you, um, I looked at the article you sent, uh, uh, holding higher edu education to account. So one of the things that obviously you're focused on is measuring the outcomes so that you're not sort of saying, this is what we feel uh, the people will be like when they finish our leadership program, but you're actually measuring it. So can you talk a little bit about how you're measuring it and what those measurements look like and what they can sort of demonstrate to employers afterwards? Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, the, the article that you're referencing, the reason that um, we think that it's so important to get the word out about our work here is because across the country, um, you know, higher ed is a very competitive business these days. Mm -hmm. Going to sure. college is not a cheap proposition. And almost every university has somewhere in their mission statement a claim that they are developing leaders, that they mm -hmm. are going to take, you know, these young, impressionable adults and turn them into effective leaders. But our research here at Rice, and because we do measure all of our outcomes, we have access to a lot of student data. We have um, evidence that shows that going to college for four years does not turn you into a leader. Um, mm -hmm. You may gain a lot of academic knowledge. You may learn how to think. You may gain technical skills. But going to college alone does not turn you into a leader. It takes yeah. some You may just run up huge student debt. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, going, going to McDonald's doesn't turn you into, hamb into a hamburger. Yeah, right. So, you know, why do we think that going to college is going to turn somebody into a leader? If they need to seek, people need to seek out leadership experiences. They need to intentionally develop those skills. And we believe that um, the leader development interventions that we've designed here at Rice are effectively moving the needle. And we do mm -hmm. have uh, two full-time PhDs who work on our team, and all they do is measure the impact of our programs. They administer pre-tests, they administer post-tests, they gather um, feedback from third-party raters to let us know before and after um, intervention from the Door Institute, are people changing in their leader identity mm. and are they displaying more effective leadership skills? And the answer yeah. is yes. Yeah. And just talk about that concept of leader identity just for, for people who aren't familiar with the term. What do you mean by leader identity? So it, it encompasses several things, but it's willingness to step up and lead. It's confidence and belief um, in your um, ability to lead. Um, it's even just formulating your own personal definition of what a leader is. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we emphasize um, from the very beginning, there is no one style of leadership. There is no single definition of leadership that you must adhere to to be a successful leader. There are many different ways to lead, to influence, and um, to organize people to achieve a goal. And so every student at Rice that works with us is encouraged to develop their own definition of what a leader is, and then to strive to grow in those areas towards that vision. And obviously the, the, the students are one part of the equation, but on the other side, there's obviously the coaches and the people who mentor them through, mentor them through the program. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about what are the coaches and what qualifications and criteria you have for a coach to be able to be a leadership coach for the students. So um, in our programs here, we interview coaches twice a year and we have mm -hmm. several things that we're looking for. We're looking for professional training. We're looking for a credential with the International Coach Federation, which we believe is the gold standard in the coaching credential, credentialing world. Um, we're looking for people who have the intellectual capacity to relate to the student population that we have here at Rice. Rice is a top 20 institution. Mm -hmm. And the students who come here are students with 4.0 GPAs, perfect SAT scores. They are so smart and so intimidating. And <laughs> you, as a coach, you need to be able to hold your own against those students um, as a coach. Um, mm. So we're looking for experienced professional coaches who have credentials. And then in addition to that, we put all of our coaches through um, rigorous training here on the ground here at Rice so that they understand 
the context and the culture of their stu- their student clients. And so, when when somebody starts uh, when somebody goes starts going through the program, what are some of the as you've done this over the years? What are some of the things that maybe surprise the students about leadership that maybe they weren't anticipating before? And conversely, when you're coaching, what are some of the things about about students and developing student leaders that have surprised the coaches? Mm. So I'll say something that I think you know, in regards to the first question, I think. Sp- our students are often caught off guard um, when we challenge their assumptions about leadership. Uh, I would say, and this is a generalization, I, mm-hmm. I understand, but sure, among, of course. Among, Gen, among Gen Z, um, there's a lot of cynicism around mm-hmm. leadership. They have not seen a lot of good role models when it comes to leadership. And so it's not uncommon for a young person to actually push mm-hmm. away and resist the idea of being a leader because they think, well, I don't want to be like that person that I know mm-hmm. yeah. um, who I consider to be pushy, arrogant, um, you know, self-seeking, the things that they might traditionally associate with leadership. We have right. to help them tear down that old definition and those assumptions and create their a new positive definition of what a leader can be, what a leader should be. Yeah, and, it's an interesting point because there is that, uh, especially with Gen Z, that kind of uh, that um, feeling that they are kind of, you know, they, they're reacting a lot, even against the millennial generation and that. But the, as you mm-hmm. say, a, a lot more, a lot more cynical, um, probably because, mm-hmm. you know, they've seen these other generations ahead of them and they haven't really liked what they've seen from any of them. That's true. But what Gen Z does have really going for them that, you know, we uh, take advantage of is they have such a strong sense of social responsibility. Mm-hmm. They're very, they're activists. They want to see the world change. And we say, well, who do you think is going to bring that change about? It's going to take leadership, ethical leadership, um, competent leadership to bring about these changes. So mm-hmm. we challenge them and we say, what, well, you know, who's going to step into the gap and assume those leadership responsibilities to bring about the impact that you want to have? Yeah. And then realize, of course, that it's not as simple as they thought it was from the outside. <laughs> That's right. That's right. There's more yeah. to it than just having a title or a position. There's yeah. actually a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah. And then from the from the coach's point of view, um, what is it? Have any of the coaches, have you, have they found anything that surprised them when they've started working with uh, with with young people and working on leadership with them? Anything they've surprised and things they've learned from them? Uh, let's see. Um, several things that you know come to mind. I'd say that our coaches um, overall are very impressed with the sincerity um, and the openness of the students. Mm. A lot of most all the coaches that I hire um, are used to working with middle managers, senior leaders um, in right. corporate settings. And sometimes when they come work at Rice, they realize like, wow, it's so refreshing to be working with a young adult who's at the very beginning of their career. They haven't, they have, they don't have decades of bad habits that need to be Mm -hmm. broken. And it's like a blank slate in some ways. So helping students create their own definition of a leader, um, having that youthful energy and idealism. I think that also comes with Gen Z to work with has really, um, you know, made those coaching engagements special. Mm-hmm. But obviously a blank slate, but a super smart blank slate, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and so, uh, and you said the program has been going for how long now? Four years. We launched in 2015. Right. Yeah, so and so do you do you have some, you have some people who have gone into the, who have graduated and gone into the workforce? Yes. So we have graduated mm-hmm. several classes of students who have worked with the Door Institute. Um, you know, what? What I can tell you is that we do have evidence that the students who have worked with us at the Door Institute are graduating um, better positioned to lead, and we are following those alumni now mm, through right. longitudinal studies to track their careers and see how this early intervention is going to impact them over the course of their careers. 
Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a fascinating longitudinal study, obviously, to see you know how they progress and how they lead differently than other people who maybe haven't been exposed to this. But I think it's a, it's obviously a, it's a very interesting thing uh, that you're doing, because like I said, is like most people uh, don't learn any leadership skills in college, or if they learn them, yeah, they a certain type of leadership skill, maybe. Mm-hmm. But you tend to because let's face it, when you go out into the world, then to get a job, you don't you don't often start off in a leadership position, right? That's you have to work true. your way up. That's very true. And which is why we do emphasize that leadership is not about a title or a position. Mm-hmm. It's how you show up. It's your willingness to put yourself out there, influence other people, um, use those soft skills to drive the outcomes that you that you want to see. Yeah, I mean, we here we follow here the principles of the of the of Friedman Malik and the Malik Institute, the Malik management um, um, process. And one of the things he talks about in management is that the the greatest the greatest and the number one management priority is management of self. And I think you're talking mm-hmm. about the similar thing here of leadership of self. So you can you can lead. And again, um, I think the the point here is that. You can you could join an organization and be at the lowest level on the org chart, but you could lead by the way you operate and show up and 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 all of that. Absolutely. So knowing how to lead yourself is the starting point. Then knowing how to lead a team, um, and then over time stepping up to bigger and bigger um, roles and responsibilities. So can anybody at anybody who's and who is uh, say an undergrad at Rice can any of the and any of them do this leadership program? Yes, and that's what we um, think sets us apart from a lot of other leadership programs at other universities. There is um, no competition. Um, every student has access to their own personal leadership coach here at Rice, and. Um, We were just looking at some data from last year's graduating class, and about 35% of the graduating class had worked with the Door Institute. Wow. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fantastic and much needed because I mean, as being in the in the higher ed space, obviously you know this. I mean, there is a lot of intense debate today about uh, uh, you know the usefulness of a lot of of uh, what people go to college to and study and and how useful mm-hmm. that is you know in the real world afterwards mm-hmm. even when they end up spending a lot of money on things that maybe aren't uh, aren't that uh, as maybe useful as others i think what you're doing here to really equip people in a holistic fashion is is uh, is you know it's a tremendous uh, it's a tremendous uh, thing that you're doing yes and and you know john i'll i'll share just an anecdote with you and mm-hmm. Um, it's one story, but it's representative of many students who have gone through our programs. Um, last year, there was a student who, um, she had graduated a full year before, and she um, reached out to me and asked, I'm going to be in Houston. I'm going to be near the Rice campus. Could I come by and um, have coffee with you? We got together, and what she wanted to tell me was that um, she was going off to law school, she said, when I reflect back on my experience at Rice, the single most, the single most impactful thing that I did at Rice was working with the Door Institute. The lesson yeah. that I learned there, the personal transformation that I underwent because of the leadership coaching has stayed with me and influenced me every day of my career. Yeah, and and I mean, you can't get much better than that because, as we say, I mean, it's a it's a strange world that uh, that people are coming out into. Businesses are going through tremendous transitions and changes in the way mm-hmm. in the way they operate, the way they're organized. Um, I talk a lot with people about the changing nature of 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 how organizations operate now with with less emphasis on physical buildings, you know, remote workers, people operating wherever they want to, being being using technology a lot more, the gig economy, people being able to, some people selecting to be contractors as opposed to be employees, all of that. So it's it's a huge amount of change out there. And with any, with with large-scale change, uh, there is a huge requirement for leadership to lead people through changes and to come out, you know, with the with the optimum results. So, again, mm-hmm. I think um, having these younger people coming into the workforce with the leadership 
skills uh, uh, and, uh, you know, having thought this through profoundly during your program, I think can only benefit. Well, thank you. I couldn't agree more with your assessment of, you know, the changing landscape um, that our students are graduating and moving into. And our hope is that our work here at Rice will not just impact students here at Rice, but impact higher ed in general. And to that end, at the end of this month, we are going to be hosting um, a symposium here at Rice with 20 other um, university representatives that are coming to Houston to learn about the DOOR Institute, the DOOR method, and to take back some learnings to hopefully impact the students at their universities. Yeah, and I think it's great. And I think it's great uh, influencing other universities too and making sure that um, you know, universities continue to look at how they can adapt to the to the new realities of the world and be more practical in, in what they do. One thing you you did mention before we came on air, and I just want to make sure people understand this, is this program is for undergraduates, but you do have people who are not uh, who are not students who can also take part in the program. Is that right? Yes, and um, and let me clarify also that every graduate student at Rice also has access to our programs. So right. you can be a PhD, you can be um, getting your master's in cello performance, you can be an MBA student. Every student at Rice um, can participate in our coaching programs and our other leader development programs. But we do have a program called Coach Rice for um, people in the Houston business community. And it's targeted at people who want to develop leadership coaching skills that they mm -hmm. can implement in their you know, own um, daily lives. So. We, um, let's see, every year we probably graduate about 125 people um, from that program, and it's a 60-hour training program. Excellent. Well, listen, um, Ruth, this has been fascinating, and, uh, you know, it's great. Uh, thank you for giving us an insight into the work you're doing. Uh, so, Ruth Reitmeyer of the Dur the door, I keep saying door for some reason, door Institute and Rice University. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Listen, thank you very much for talking with us today. And I'll see you all for another expert interview soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, John.